my name is Kuban Altan. I'm one of the co-founders of Zero Density and I'm responsible for research and development at the company and uh, the product design and roadmap as well. Uh, my name is Ralf Vechten. I'm the CMO of uh, Zero Density. I have a background in technology and uh, I worked on different aspects of the virtual production and broadcast graphics domain. Uh, for me, Zero Density is not the average uh, virtual production technology company. I see a deep passion for the unknown. Uh, it is a company where imagination meets innovation and innovation is at the core of the company and deep within the DNA of the team uh, and also the founders. I used to be a visual effects artist and everybody was asking to me, Kuban, look at this game, how realistic it is and it's, it's working in real time. Uh, why can't we have this in uh, post-production at this speed, at this quality? And I think that question was actually the trigger to research the use of game engine in, uh, in broadcast. And in the end, the reason for Zero Density to introduce reality in 2016, the first virtual production platform using uh, Unreal Engine. And I think it was a revolution and everybody saw the massive difference in quality. And I remember seeing it for the first time uh, and immediately noticed uh, immense possibilities that this would bring to the company I worked for, but also the entire industry. But it takes a lot of effort and you need to be able to take a lot of risks to try something that nobody has done before. So if you have a product like Reality that is the absolute benchmark uh, in the industry, um, redeveloping everything from the ground up takes courage uh, and is a risk for, for the company. It took two years to develop uh, Reality 5 and now it's here. With Reality version 5, we just have moved all the node-based compositing video I.O. capabilities completely outside the engine. We are running right now uh, completely on the Vulkan uh, API, which is what we believe uh, it would be the graphics API for the future. Uh, Reality 5 is a new version of an already superior product uh, with a completely new architecture that will enable us to not only provide best-in-class virtual production solutions, but we are also able to introduce new features at an uh, unprecedented pace. And with the introduction of this uh, new architecture, I think we also saw that there was no render hardware capable of uh, providing the render performance that would fully enable what Reality 5 could bring to our clients. And that had the broadcast endurance capabilities at the same time. We wanted our users still utilize the bleeding edge uh, CPU for games, the bleeding edge GPU for games, including their requirements like rack mountability, redundant power supply, reliability, 724 operation and the necessary cooling. The architecture of the EVO 2 is therefore aimed at maximizing the impact of the four biggest performance influencers, the CPU, the GPU, the power delivery uh, system and thermal management when rendering with a game engine like Unreal. The GPU vendors and the CPU vendors had to compete for the game uh, FPS benchmarks. This is how the gamers decide which CPU and which GPU to buy. So they need to deliver the highest frame rates uh, with their GPUs and with their CPUs. And we just got that gaming hardware and our software now enables to utilize that. But what was missing? Is there any vendor delivering all of these together as a professional product? We just looked if there was a possible solution or a vendor that we could have worked with but it did not exist. So I think it was up to the hardware team at Zero Density to engineer the platform completely from scratch. For the CPU, we have chosen the AMD Ryzen processor that performs the best on both the support of the single-threaded processes and also uh, its uh, thermal characteristics. Your server CPU may deliver better performance, but we are running Unreal Engine. We are running blueprints on Unreal Engine. We know how the code works the way the code works and we have chosen the best performing CPU for that code and 
actually even the hardware vendors, the CP vendors are designing uh, their hardware for those software too. They are also optimizing that. Why not use that? Why insist using a database optimized CPU for a game engine because it is professional? Really? But it's not made for the job. The gaming CPUs and the gaming GPUs are optimized to maximize the performance on the games. Uh, so the same applies to the GPU. Uh, the team selected the RTX 1490 because it has a much higher performance uh, than the Quadro GPU for game engines. So some people might wonder why, because just based on the specs, the Quadro has uh, better cards. No, we can't go with the capped Quadro, the capped version of Ada GPU uh, because of Quadro limitations. That's what made us say or take the decision to go with the GeForce on this generation. Because if you want to put inside a Quadro into our chassis, it's way easier. It will handle that easily. It will consume less power, but it will also uh, give a lot less performance. So it's actually quite strange because the RTX 1490 has less tensor cores, uh, less ray tracing cores, less VRAM uh, than the Quadro. Uh, but because of the amount of watts uh, that are fed into the uh, GPU, the performance for game engine based rendering is 32% uh, higher compared um, to the Quadro. Uh, and to the first version of the Ampere even 160%. Uh, but to make the RTX 4090 reliable in a 24-7 broadcast operation, uh, the team had to modify the power distribution big time. It's where we have spent a lot of work uh, to deliver the GPU power reliably in 724 hour operations uh, without any causing any trouble in the long term. That was our number one thing that we were checking. From the chassis, uh, the internally the cabling is like our design and we worked a lot uh, on the uh, GPU power connector, which is the new 16 pin power connector, which causes a lot of trouble, which caused to many users. And we tested a lot of pins, we investigated them, uh, in our lab, uh, we loaded the pens for extremely high power delivery and we checked them under the microscope which pin works uh, best, even overloaded. Uh, when you hear the development story of the EVO 2 hardware platform, um, sometimes it's very difficult to understand that even simple things like a power supply these days is not engineered um, to support the high constant power required by a uh, high-end GPU. Uh, or that the cabling inside is still uh, created in such a way that it is blocking the airflow. <laughs> the power delivery being the biggest trouble. Because when I looked at uh, how people are manufacturing the power supplies for gaming hardware, you know, it's the old PC ATX standard and the cabling comes with it. It was like a mess. We wanted to make sure that we can deliver uh, the power uh, in a healthy way inside the chassis because this is an air-cooled uh, engine. We didn't want any clutter inside the chassis to maximize the airflow. Anything that you have inside the chassis blocks air. And that airflow is actually super important as having the GPU and the CPU uh, running well within their operating limits is not only important for the performance on the short term, but it's also important for the integrity of the uh, components on the long term. With air cooling, we use all the surface uh, as an air intake. And we don't have any cable clutter inside. We even removed the PC ATX standards. So as a result, the cooling of the EVO 2 um, is very efficient. Uh, internal temperatures stay way within uh, the limits. Uh, and the EVO 2 does that while generating only 50 dBA uh, of noise. 
The engineering of the EVO 2 went as far that um, high-end 3D printing was used to create specialized components that were uh, required to get the results that we were looking for. And with this method we were able to produce high quality precise components uh, at low quantities. The 3D printing is serious. If you go to different industries you may find a lot of samples uh, of this. Um, even in the automobile industry the highest end uh, things are getting 3D printed with different materials. They also utilize metal 3D printing there with laser sintering. So actually 3D printing allows right now uh, to design and manufacture parts which were not really possible with the previous manufacturing methods. So with this 3D printing technology, we are also able to create items inside the chassis that are in close contact with uh, high current components uh, and they are made of, out of uh, special fire retardant um, materials. Well, and the same care that went into uh, selecting the components and building the manufacturing process goes into the quality control of every EVO 2 that we deliver. So the EVO 2 uh, is made for performance and durability uh, and that is not taken lightly. So we check every connector, we check all the cables, we check each uh, power supply instance, we check the fans, we monitor the fans, we have even two fans. One of them is enough, just like a passenger airplane, but we have put two, just to make sure, even if one fails, I haven't seen a uh, fan failing on its own, but even if it may fail, uh, we still have dual fans. So we are also testing each unit under full load for some time to make sure that it will work for years. So we are confident that we are bringing a new and unique platform uh, with ultimate performance that is crafted for high-end virtual production to the market. Uh, but it doesn't stop here. Obviously, uh, we are going to have this hardware uh, keeping up with uh, upcoming CPUs for gaming and for the GPUs as well. We will keep this hardware platform updated to deliver the maximum game engine performance uh, for its era let's say. That's the goal. So we are ready to launch the EVO 2 at NAB24. Hope to see you there.